Uh, but is it possible to then turn around and look at the reports of world events and in any way detect evidence of these developments coming to expression in a genuine and trustworthy way. Well, of course, nothing in the reports of the social order or the world drama is trustworthy, is it? Hence, I recognize and respect your reservations about, for instance, the figure of Giorgia Meloni. Uh, okay, all right. It's about time you had something to say. Too often lately, homework gets issued, and it's not collected for correcting or grading. Rigpa goes off and finds something to chew on for a while. And then off again it goes to find something else. Well, here I am. And there you go, with another riff. I'll give you a fair listen, Mr. Lash. I'll listen to what you have to say on this Maloney character. Oh, if only you could make it short and sweet, and give it to me fast and easy. Now, to make it short and sweet, and to put it to you fast and easy, I give you this syntax. The developments in the celestial code shown by the planets in the constellations and the stationary direct, the stationary retrograde, the retrograde loops in particular, which can be observed, are indications of how the script supervisor is managing the actionable events of correction so that eventually they can manifest in real events on the stage of the world drama. So what I'm offering you is new syntax in the cinematic metaphor. And I can tell you that this syntax has been developing for a while. My Rigpa has been working on it, and you know how Rigpa works. It goes off on its own. You give it something to work on, goes off on its own, then it comes back later and gives you flashes of what it's developing. And I am certain that the flashes that I had leading up to this new concept of script supervisor, which came just a week ago, were aligned with my prairie dog intuitions that something big was on the way, something big was in the works, what might be, in fact, possibly, the trigger event in correction. Of course, the trigger event has to be a real event that happens in the social order, in the world drama, played out by particular actors. And those actors, like Giorgia Meloni, don't have to be in the primary cast of actors, screenwriters. They don't have to be in there at all. They don't have to qualify. Uh, either as individuals, Georgia Maloney as a person, an individual with her history, her morality, her family, her personal narrative, nor her role. None of that has to be aligned to the criteria that you and I follow in Sophia's Dreaming. Nevertheless, those characters can be actors who play a role in genuine and trustworthy developments in correction. Try to get your mind around that. I'm open-minded. You can converse with me. I enjoy playing with the cinematic metaphor. Sophia is the script supervisor. Well, there's the triple S. There you go. 
So tell me, how does she do it? How does she do it? She does it primarily by speech and by the words, messages, and declarations that come into the exosphere. Those are fair parameters. Looking at, or rather, listening to the words, uh, let's stay focused here, the words of this particular actress. Now, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you go and look into the background. All right, agreed. Background disregarded. So it doesn't matter if she, in her role as prime minister, supports Ukraine, whatever. It doesn't matter. Do you have to repeat that phrase so often? Tell me then what does matter. All that matters is the dialogue she pronounces. All that matters is the dialogue she pronounces. Acceptable. As an amateur cinema buff, with a passion for good film myself, I say I do appreciate the sort of things that go into making a great film. So what you're suggesting is to look at the dialogue or monologue, the lines spoken by the characters, aside from the characters themselves. This I can do. So I can sense your reservations, possible reservations, when you hear me say that. I can almost feel the fine hairs coming up on the back of your neck. <laughs> what, you mean this? Oh, don't mind that. It's perfectly regular. Reservations? Hey, pal, I'm on board. I'll play along, in all seriousness. You don't need to assure me nothing. But I assure you that what is stated in the exopsyche, put out into the exopsyche, even through the corrupt medium of the mainstream media, media. Mainstream meteor. I fucking love it. If it is being supervised, by the script supervisor, then it can have a definite and trustworthy impact for correction. Are you having as much fun as I am? I think I'm ready now to hear just what she has to say. She must have said something powerfully significant for you to designate someone like this woman so significantly. How can I designate someone like Georgia Meloni? Meloni. Well, she is a supporting actress. I invite you to leave a space to accept that possibility. Certainly possible. Maloney can be a supporting actress in the overall drama of things, so long as what she says motivates, let me say, a correct response in the exopsyche. She has a supporting role and she has lines. She has lines! But what are those lines again? But what if these lines she speaks have been supervised by the script supervisor in some way. Sophia can manage anything. I've witnessed her demonstrations of this in my own life. It's certainly possible that her truth, or even a general truth, about the correct attitudes and behaviors towards the human condition, it's possible that that truth can come through the mouth of anyone. I think I'm getting it. So now I'm ready for you to tell me precisely what those wonderful lines of truth were. I leave you with that question. Wait, what? I invite you to contemplate that question. 
Okay, um, well, I'm all for contemplating the question. You don't have to believe me, folks. I wouldn't be committing this valuable time to participating in this particular dialogue. Whether or not my contribution is received in the jest intended, in so-called good spirits, can I say this? It would help me to contemplate the question. If you would just tell me the dialogue that I'm supposed to recognize as bearing the advantage given to truth. I mean, what does she say, Lash? Come on! It's not like whenever Rigpa brings up a character to look at, like uh, Robert Temple or Robert Archery or John Paul Satra or Donald Trump or Nancy Pelosi. Uh, remember, remember the DWW uh, when Trump called those uh, ge those gangsters uh, animals, and then Nancy Pelosi was all upset about that, and you spliced in like a couple minutes of of of, of her response to. <laughs> Anyway, what I'm getting at is that when we've looked at the actual spoken words of other Tads before, you, you, we, we looked at their actual words, and here you reference spoken words, but you don't actually cite them. Okay, it's not over yet. It's the 24th second of the 24th minute. Ah, I bet you're saving the golden lines of Maloney for somewhere later down in this recording. All right, I want to hear it. Lay it on me. If you can take that on board, let's go back and look at the role of such people as Georgia Maloney. Right, here we go. Wait a tick. The role? I thought you said it didn't matter what role she played. I just want to hear what the hell she says. Hey, John, wait a minute. Are you saying that even if she acts as politicians typically act, and she comes out and she says certain things, Certain things, exactly. Like what certain things? And asserts certain standards and criteria and objectives and protocols, and then turns around and actually doesn't act on what she says and betrays it, that she can still be a supporting actor and play a supporting role. And I say, yes, she can. Fine, she's a supporting actress. She's a supporting actress. Because... Because it is not merely she alone who is responsible for choosing what she said in her acceptance speech. Ah, uh, yes, her acceptance speech. The script supervisor determines to a degree what she said. Here again is the punch, John. What did she say? I don't know if you're getting this. Agreed. I don't know if you're getting this either. For fuck's sake, John, you sure know how to tantalize. Now, I feel compelled to add this and then something else. Add this and then something else? Tangents now? Am I being unfair to point out that we haven't actually gotten to any, act, any specific words of dialogue, man? Well, first of all, It could be said in this context that Trump was sort of a beta test for Giorgio Maloney. All right, I like where this is going, grandiose claims. Now, it is a well-known fact that Trump said many things. Donald said so many things, and you've quoted him on more than one occasion. You gotta love those years, those four years, yes for the triggering things that man said. That seemed to be right-wing and seemed to be supportive or suggestive of a correction 
in the politics of the United States. But then he was entirely run by Yuds or Yudahites, Yuds, I call them Yuds, okay? He was entirely run by the Zadik Yuds. Nonetheless, it was observed during the time of Trump's four years that what he said emboldened those people. Now I can refrain from delving into what Trump said. You know he said a lot of things. Most of them were spicy remarks, for better or worse. Yes, they did embolden the white partisans. I've seen it happen. But, buddy, Trump cannot speak for Georgia Maloney. I still insist that if what she says matters, then it matters what she says. Does that make any sense? So it doesn't matter if he actually walked the talk. I admit that when I first heard you say this, it was astounding. Not walking the talk. I can see within that claim possibly a great game changer here. Talking the talk without walking the walk. Well, if it applies to Meloni, then it applies to anyone. Consider that. You know, it ultimately doesn't matter. This briefing may well be renamed It Doesn't Matter. You say it about a dozen times or more, repeatedly. Anyway, it's fair to go to what does matter. What matters is what the script supervisor deems appropriate to be said in, to the audience in the exopsyche. Okay? Okay. So, now what did Maloney say to the audience in the exopsyche? But it doesn't matter, you see. It doesn't matter. It only matters that true things be said. It only matters that true things be said. It doesn't matter who says them or whether or not they live up to them. Okay? It doesn't matter who says them or whether or not they live up to them. I enjoy this consideration. In part... And here's the kicker, because I myself apply to that statement. If I may be so bold as to refer to my reputation on Nemeta, of which I have no control and no desire to control, I will say it seems that I've gained some kind of notoriety, and I might be one of the most distrusted participants in these investigations. But I ask, does it matter? Does it matter that I might act rude at times? Does it matter that I have criticism that strikes you as unpleasant? If, potentially if that criticism is in some way valid or voracious. Now I won't go into the subject of predication. You make some claims that by, quote, predicating, unquote, in a certain way, means that I am saying that the power of lies is greater than the power of truth to overcome those lies. Not at all, good sir. I've never said anything of the sort. If you've been listening to me these past agonizing minutes, you might notice that I am on board. I have an open mind. I'm eager to put these considerations into practice. I have at this point only a single qualification to ask for. If true things indeed be said by Georgia Meloni, tell me, tell me if it pleases you. Tell me if it gives you any delight to do so what those true things are. I truly want to hear it for myself. So, have at it. Enough said, and I'll be seeing you 
in the second part of my audio for this shift. The second part? Is that it? You make a big fuss about how the only thing that matters is what this woman says and you can't even bring to mind just what it was that she says? Just what the f What in the f f Oh. Oh, ho, ho. I get it. I think I get it now. Mr. Lash, you snarky dog. You big tease. <laughs> I, I get it. <laughs> You're not going to tell me just what it was that Maloney had to say. Because, <clears throat> because you want me to go and listen to it myself. Brilliant. Brilliant. You really had me going there. Oh, this was a tough one. Oh, but I can see now where this trail of investigation leads. I'm on it. I'm on board. I'm with you and hear me out. I'm ready with an open mind and with enthusiasm to finally hear some emboldening dialogue. From Gio, Gia Meloni. Yes, I'll give her a fair listen. It's not enough to take your word for it. Well, that would be irresponsible research. You said it here uh, when you were talking about um, Nesta Webster's book, right? You said that she goes to first hand sources. Oh, damn it. I know that there are some first-hand sources out there just waiting for my ears to hear it for myself. It's not about copying your assessment. It's not even about what this Brit and this other bloke have to say. When I first inspected the video, I had no idea what was going on. I didn't even know there was a woman involved. I just saw two dudes having a Zoom conversation. Then I noticed that there is a woman in the thumbnail. Upon my first view, I clicked around and I couldn't find where they actually splice in the actual words of Giorgia Meloni. But I checked again and it seems that they do indeed uh, have a clip from an older speech. Okay, setting aside their assessment, setting aside even your assessments, I want to have the opportunity to make my own by listening to it straight from the woman herself. Thanks for playing along. My only wish is that you receive this in the manner I intend. With jest. It's just fun. I don't really like that word, just. Well, it's all for fun. See it or not. Tune in to the next video. <laughs> Goddess, what a cliched line. In the next video, I'm going to sit down with open ears and an open mind and listen and give Meloni a fair listen. Perhaps her acceptance speech would be a good place to start. I admit you got me, man. Until this point, I haven't heard a single word from the woman. And I mean straight from the woman herself. Ah, you aren't about to tell me, after stressing repeatedly how the only thing that matters is what she says, that it also doesn't matter specifically what she says. Were you to do so, what would that be? Talking in circles? You'd be going nowhere, and then absolutely nothing matters. Whether it matters or not, I'm finally excited to give this gal a fair listen.
Thanks again, and you'll see me then.